You know, sometimes it can be hard to ask for what we want, and sometimes it's even harder to get it. Well, Heather Hansen is here, and she's going to give us some tips to help us get what we want in life. Heather, thanks for coming to join us today. Thanks so much for having me, David. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear this message, too. So what is the first step in becoming your own best advocate? The first step is recognizing that you have to do it. You know, so often, both in the courtroom in my years as a trial attorney and with my coaching and consulting clients now, people want me to do it for them. You know, they think you can do this better. You've been doing this for years, but no one can advocate for you better than you can. No one has your heart, your experience, your passion, your needs, your wants. Nobody else can do it. And once you really recognize that and believe it, you become your own strongest advocate. That's a great message, great point. So tell us, you've come up with an exercise you've created to help with this. What is that all about? So the first exercise is to know what you want and to know, make choices, right? Because the first tool of an advocate is what I call elegance. The root of the word elegance is to choose. We choose what we're going to advocate for. And sometimes people come to me and they say, I don't know what I want. Yeah. So the way that we go through this process of choosing is first to know that you're choosing. You know, when you hit snooze in the morning, you might not recognize that you're choosing not to work out. Or if you get up and you're sort of mean to your spouse, you don't, might not recognize that you're choosing not to uh, perpetuate that relationship. So you want to know that you're choosing. And then you want to know who is choosing. Because so often we allow our choices to be made by our fear, our habit, our mothers. And so you want to make sure that you know that it's the best part of you that is choosing. And then you want to know your reasons. And I often encourage people to make a list of all the reasons to make one choice and a list of all the reasons to make another choice. Sometimes it's that simple, day. They look at those lists and they know right away what they want. Life is so all about choices. We have the power you. to choose. I love that. And we are glad that you chose to be with us today to share this message. Now, what about other people, people we love, our, our, spar our parents, our spouses, our children? What about advocating for them? So advocating for them is great. Part of that is knowing what they want and what they're choosing, advocating to them. So say you want your spouse to give you better boundaries or more help at home. The first thing that I would say is see things from a person's perspective. You know, I often say that you can't change someone's perspective until you know it and understand it. In the courtroom, it was my job to see the jury's perspective and then try to change it. So you want to do the same. You want to think to yourself, how does my spouse, how does my partner, how does my child, how does my boss see this situation? What do they need? What do they want? And how can I advocate in a way that makes them feel like they're getting what they want? And that oftentimes is the best step to go ahead and get it. You spent a lot of time in the courtroom. You said inner and outer juries. What is that really quickly about? Inner jury is the part of you that chooses. It's the part of you that makes those choices. And you want to persuade yourself sometimes just as much as the outer jury. And you use the same tools to do that. Your outer jury is anyone that you want to persuade or influence. So it's your boss, your friends, your family, your kids, your students, your patients, anyone whose choices you want to impact. Well, we, I love this message, and you have so much more in your book. It's out right now. You can go to AdvocateToWin.com. Go to AdvocateToWin.com. Get more information. It's out right now. Thank you, Heather, for being with us today. We really appreciate your time. And hopefully you choose to come back to, to visit us again sometime. <laughs> I would love to, David. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great day.